Ahoy! Uploading in a bit of an unusual time today because I want to make sure that you get this information while you can still do something about it. You may have seen Freyas Francesca and thought, wow, this is absolutely terrible for a throwing hatchet build. I can't even lock refreshing distancing throw on this. Uh, why would I run this? And you would be completely right if you're looking at throwing hatchet builds because there isn't really much of a benefit for those builds as far as I've found so far. However, Roger pointed out something very interesting to me the other day and that sent me down a bit of a rabbit hole as to what can actually be done with this hatchet. And I will tell you right now that it's actually extremely good for multiple purposes, for damaging and tanking. It's just not a good throwing hatchet. In fact, I would go as far as to say that this is the best PvE tank weapon in the game right now, especially for new tanks that are still struggling with mob control and aggro. Let's begin with the DPS side of things. All credit goes to Roger here, whose clips I'll also be using. You can check out his Twitch and his YouTube down below. So when Roger got his hatchet, he upgraded it and slotted Rogue on it. You can also slot Vicious here. He ran the following builds. So he had Berserk, Raging Torrent and Rending Throw. I know, I know, no Defy Death. I've told you this before. If you want to commit heavily into damage, you have to skip Defy Death. You just get better perks and the right capstone gives you way more damage. Otherwise, you will not keep up in DPS anymore. That's just life now. The only other unusual point that you skip is accumulated power, which gives you an empower when you're light attacking. Uh, this is because you kind of have to put more points on the right side to get the capstone. And you're getting a ton of empower from Berserk all the time anyways, which has an insane uptime with this build, so it doesn't really matter all that much. Here's a clip from an early, slightly sloppy dummy test. He didn't use quite the same build here, uh, just to give you a general idea of what direction we're going in, in terms of damage and resets and so on. And this was with roughly 400 strength and 200 dex. In this, again, fairly sloppy, unoptimized quick test, Roger was able to kill the dummy in 57 seconds, and this was without against all odds active. In comparison, Roger's rapier test with the finisher has a kill time of 55 seconds on the dummy, so a 2 seconds difference. Now, rapier is bugged in some ways at the moment and would otherwise be faster than that, but it's still very close and the hatchet gets against all odds on top of that. You also have near permanent stagger immunity because you're constantly sitting in berserk. Between the hatchet passive itself, refreshing move on the hatchet and potentially refreshing torrent on your armor, cooldowns are just not a thing. Under the same circumstances, Serenity's time to kill for a dummy would be 49 seconds, so Serenity is still a fair bit ahead, but Serenity also has quite a few self empowers too, and it also relies on bleeds to a decent degree. This is a massive advantage for the hatchet when it comes to things like raids, for example a sandworm, where you are not competing with other hatchets for any overlapping damage, unlike the rapier or the greatsword, because those rely on bleeds for portions of the damage, even spears do. But the hatchet doesn't do bleed damage, it's all just raw damage. So it might actually be the case that running more hatchet gives you more DPS than anything else at the moment. Haven't tested that of course, but uh, it could actually be a very, very strong contender for that role. Here's a clip of Roger running the fully upgraded hatchet against Texodius, uh, just to show you what kind of numbers he's pulling. You can see the numbers aren't necessarily as big as what you can pull with Serenity, but there are a lot more numbers, so DPS-wise it would make sense that it at least comes close. So definitely a very interesting option, especially if you want some slightly more engaging combat than just holding left click. The rest of the gameplay here will be me running the unupgraded version of the artifact without anything. It doesn't even have a gem slot, even though it looks like it. It's a fake gem slot until you unlock it. So it's not going to pull the same numbers, but just to give you a perspective of what is actually possible uh, with a maxed out build. If you're enjoying the video so far and you want to learn more about other artifacts in the future, especially with the ones coming next week, then consider subscribing and clicking the bell. If you want to get more early tips and trading tips, you can support me on my Patreon. But Roger's testing got me thinking, if this is what we can do with the damage side of things, then what can we do with tanking? And the answer is, we can do a lot. Now, hatchet tanking is a bit of an unusual playstyle because it's not really a defensive offhand like other sides, mainly used by many people in Genesis because you can kind of get away with it with a more aggressive playstyle. But in this particular context, it gains a lot more value because it technically allows you to run your other weapon entirely without any taunts, which opens a lot of flexible options that previously just weren't available. Let me demonstrate how that plays out. First of all, important, if you have the gem slot from the beginning, it doesn't work. If you put a Canelian in there straight away, it will not taunt. You need to do the dynasty quest first to actually unlock the gem slot. And if you put a gem into the hatchet beforehand, the gem won't even work after you unlock the slot. So you need to put a different gem in there and then put the same gem in again in order to actually unlock the gem perk. Just 
an important note here. Do the Dynasty quest first, then put in your Carnelian. Now, Berserker is a very strong AoE taunt. It is rivaled by some other ones now, like, for example, the Flail taunt, as well as the Greatsword taunt. But it's always been a staple for a good taunt, and obviously the Hatchet is good in so far as well that you can do easy ranged pulls with it, uh, which can be nice as a tank. You don't rely on anyone else to do it for you. So let me show you what happens. I go in, I taunt with Berserk. You can see the taunt icon on top of the captain, and I immediately swap to my other weapon and swap back to the hatchet to use the throw and the torrent to reduce my cooldowns. You can see the taunt icon fading, and I can immediately taunt again. If you have fully min-maxed uh, refreshing and everything, that might even be a little bit quicker. If you unlock refreshing move on the hatchet, that would be a little bit quicker. Uh, basically, the throw alone is enough for the reset. Even if you don't want to stay on the hatchet at all, you don't want to use torrent. Uh, if you just use the throw, uh, that's enough to have such a low cooldown on the taunt that you can just cycle the taunt over and over and over against an entire group of mobs. Obviously this doesn't work as well if there's a single mob uh, that's coming later or something and you can't aggro them because you already used uh, that taunt there, but generally speaking this should be completely fine as the only taunt you need for the vast majority of situations. The downside is that you don't get the stagger immunity or anything from Berserk, that's some sacrifice you need to make because you have to swap off it to immediately disable Berserk itself so that you can start reducing the cooldown. First of all, this is obviously a very nice way for people to hold aggro that aren't that experienced with tanking it. As long as a mob is taunted, you will hold aggro no matter how much damage other people do. So that's one upside, but then again, you can run this with completely different loadouts. For example, you could run your Sword and Shield with both Whirling Blade, Shield Rush, and then whatever else you want. You could, for example, run it with Reverse Stab and get more cooldown reduction. If you're, for example, running it with Butcher, so you can get more Whirling Blade uptime or Bleed uptime, you don't need Defender's Resolve, which I think is a nice one to skip for the most part, because it's kind of an ability you mostly use because it has a taunt. Everything else is somewhat secondary most of the time. Similarly, it would also allow you to skip Shield Bash if you are currently running that and you don't want to run that. Or what is even more interesting is that you can run this with a flail, which I think has a lot of interesting potential applications. For example, trip is an interesting ability for tanking because you can apply a lot of debuffs with your weapon with that as well. Uh, Arcane Smite could be nice technically just for the stagger. Uh, Arcane Vortex could be nice for the teammates. Arcane Eruption could be interesting. All of these abilities uh, potentially have interesting utility that you could use for tanking somehow but they are kind of locked away to some degree because the taunts are on warding bludgeon and on barrage and barrage as a taunt is arguably not particularly nice to use anyways of course there are also other secondary options you can run this with like greatsword or warhammer but those don't come with a shield so i think uh, most people that go that far into committing to a non-shield tank build uh, probably don't have any issues holding aggro anyway so they probably wouldn't want to rely on berserk for that it is worth keeping in mind that if you're looking to have a lot of rents in your team, you want to have a Warhammer somewhere. This doesn't have to be on the tank. Sometimes I feel like it's even better to have it on a DPS because they can free cast it whenever. They're not as pressured to do it at specific times uh, since the Warhammer has so many different rents now. So if you're skipping that in favor of the hatchet on your tank, uh, then make sure that you put it somewhere else in your team if required. Now, some bad news. Francisca is only available to farm for one more day because it comes from the Genesis mutation, which will only be available again on the next cycle. On the other hand, the good news is that it seems that the drop chance is equally high on every mutation level from what we found for artifacts so far, so you can just speed run M1s and it takes like 10 minutes, it's really not that hard to do. In the next days we'll talk about flail gearing as well as best in slot defensive artifacts for medium and heavy, which is very relevant with the next week coming around and the new expeditions or new mutations, so consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you're interested in that. I'll post a very spicy trading tip on my Patreon later this week. If you're interested in that, consider supporting me there. Thanks to all of my patrons who already do exactly that. I thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.